Hello guys, we're here at the Navi Museum and we're going to meet uh, an artist and talk a little bit about the connections between art and conservation. Let's go inside, let's go. Uh, I believe you are an art dealer. Yes. yes and uh, you are currently you've currently organized a an exhibition here up in the northern part of Botswana in Maroon in our town museum, the Nabi Museum, which by the way is named uh, after a river branch of the Okavango. So and yeah, tell us a little bit about it. How did it? How did you get to it? What does it mean? What is in the exhibition mm -hmm. and things like this? So um, this is called the Signature Art Exhibition, and uh, it features six artists. Um, so the the name Signature came from the fact that I wanted each artist to bring that signature style to the exhibition. So we have different types of styles. We have uh, an abstract artist, we have a mixed media artist. He uses recycled material to like cans and, and wires to make his art. We have, um, we have a surrealist, we have a realist, and then we have two types of sculptors, one on fiberglass and the other one is on wood. And the reason why we, we had this exhibition is because during like when COVID hit, the creative industry was hit the most. And with it, like, you kind of have to adapt or die off. And I think it was like, it's, we can finally collaborate as, as like artists and art dealers to make something beautiful. And that's why I wanted a bunch of artists in it. And it started in Kaburoni in April, the capital of Botswana. And then we decided, you know what, let's take a country ride since not a lot of people saw it in Kaburoni. And there's other parts of the country that appreciate art as well. So that's why I, and, um, I decided that, you know what, let me take it to Mau next. And then after this, we're going to another part of Botswana. So that's kind of just the, the gist of it. I mean, when it comes to art in Botswana, I'm, I mean, I've been living in Africa since I was in my early 20s. Um, in Africa, generally, in my, and I'm not an art person per se, so I'm a conservationist, you know, we try to protect things. Yeah. But uh, we will get back to this a little bit later, but Africa in general is so full of art. You're driving down the street and there is somebody selling art on the side of the of the street like yeah. this be a printed batik or a hand carving or whatever or people do beading and the basket weaving is a big thing up here in the north um, Africa is full of art but here in Maroon and it might be due to the fact that we are at the end of Botswana so to say we are the tourism hub not the business yeah, hub like yeah. where you're coming from but surprisingly there is very little art and what why do you think that is there's very little art to 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 that is put out there and, it's, and shows the world here is what we do from an art point of view mm. it's a stand on the side of the street and uh, what do you think is it just because these people don't have a platform to present it or why do you um, think that is i think the thing with moan is you see in in to tourist locations right um informal business is, is like a big thing I think it's in every single country where there's a tourist location, there's a lot of informal business, there's a lot of street vendors, there's somebody always trying to sell you beads, something like that. So I think that's the, the thing with Maun. Down south in Kaburoni, you don't have a lot of tourists. So what happens is there are actual formal markets where these women will carve whatever they're carving, will make whatever beads they make, take them to a store, and the store sells them for them, and then takes a commission, you see. So I think in Maun, and I think it's another reason why art isn't as as big because every other street corner has you know somebody who's painting an elephant and then selling it right by the street. I, I was telling somebody the other day that uh, formalizing the market, you know, having them putting themselves together and saying, you know what, let's have an exhibition at the museum where people 
can come and view all of the artwork. That's how you, you sell your art. In the streets, you're going to um, find somebody who's going to, you know, bring you down a few hundreds because you're in the street and it looks like, you know, just street art. But it is actually your passion and it is it is as good as the one that's in the museum. It's just that the price is 10% of it because you're in the street. So I think if they formalize it, uh, it could be a big thing. I think them also working with, with, with safaris and stuff, I think there's like a divide between the tourists. When the tourists come here, they want to go see the animals. That's all what's on ourselves. When you think about Maun, when you look um, on the internet and you look at the brochures, when you look at the Botswana magazine. Yeah, I agree. It's all zebras it, yes. and elephants and all lions. animals. Mm -hmm. And so the government doesn't push this as well. You see. So if the government had initiatives that push uh, culture as much as they push wildlife. I, I agree with you because cultural, on the tourism sector, I mean obviously Botswana is known all over the world for its wildlife and, and, all, of, and all of this, it's, but it's not known for its art mm -hmm. and it's more so also not known for its culture. Yes. So, and I believe that art depends on culture or art is used as an expression of, mm -hmm. of culture uh, while there might be um, similar styles like the, the overarching style but what is expressed is different and what is expressed depends on the artist's cultural background I believe so yes. and culture or a society is subject to certain environmental conditions and that could be not just climate like in the traditional environment since environment is also the way we live on yes, a day-to-day -day so basis us, yes. it, and by the end of the day it also boils down to to the to an economy and mm -hmm. making a living and uh, what do you think what what makes African art a little bit different from art let's say coming from New York from a New York artist, so and uh, and we've seen that in 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 the gallery. But where do you think the big difference is? And uh, I think it's it's like you said, the environment is not just you know like climate. It's it's where you grew up. So African artists, they like there's 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 this this thing where an artist. Um, they they paint or they make what they know. They paint or they make what what um, they've seen in their entire life. There's when, when you look at a New York artist, you know they they paint what they know as well. So in Africa, we're just kind of a bit more, you know, um, in tune with with nature because there's a lot of nature around us. Yeah, yeah, yeah that we makes sense. We paint things like rivers and we paint trees and we paint baobabs. We paint, you know, animals that we see on a regular basis. You know, we we paint things that we do on a regular basis. There's paintings of, of kids playing with mud cows, you know, that they made themselves because they were sent to go look after that dad's cow. When they get there, they make mud cows and then they, they play with them. So that is art and then an artist who grew up like that grows up and paints that yeah, yeah. on canvas yeah so he, i think it's just like the environment is quite different and an artist paints what they know no this is something that always impresses me here mm -hmm. because i mean let's take the united States, or let's say university of texas is located in austin mm -hmm. no doubt one of the most arty cities in the united mm -hmm. states so we've got music we've got We've got traditional art and form of painting, theater, movies, uh, you name it, tech stuff and, uh, and other things. And, but as you just said, the, the artist that gr grows up in a, and around Austin mm -hmm. probably never uh, made a mud cow. Mm -hmm. So you go to, you name the brand and you go and you purchase um, the toy in the store. Yeah, yeah. So, and it's, uh, it's just, uh, yeah, it's it's just completely different. So, uh, in an end environment, certainly shapes a people a person's mm -hmm. perception yeah. on on life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen things in most of Africa, and especially of people 
my age have grown up under completely different conditions due to the legacy of the past, colonialism, poverty, etc. And Botswana is actually a shining example, one could argue, that uh, after independence, it, uh, in comparison to other African countries, it prospered. Mm -hmm. It went upwards. And that also creates room for things like art. Mm -hmm. so, and uh, yeah, it, this is just something that uh, completely Im impresses me. And I believe it should be carried out on, let's say, an international scale and it should certainly be promoted more through the tourism pathway. So Botswana is, let's call it diversifying its tourism product. Yeah, there's ecotourism now, there's a lot of, um, you know, plans to, to have cultural villages and the likes where people can come here and not just want to go on safari, they can also go and experience the life of a person who lives here. And I think that's the thing about, um, about tourists, right? They, they go and then they, they absorb what they came to absorb and then they leave. And I think experiencing, experiencing the culture where you visited is something that makes you yearn to go back and you carry a bit of it where you go. Um, I was in Namibia a few years ago and I visited the Himba and there's this, this cultural village they have where they, 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 they are all like, they, they paint themselves with, with red mud and their hair is muddy and it was the purest thing I've ever seen because they live that truth and today years after I still remember that, that experience, like I actually experienced that. Yes, when you go on safari, it is beautiful and you get to see all of these animals. But you don't really take away a piece of humanity, you know, from where you went. You know, so cultural villages and, and, and the likes would, would be a, a beautiful thing to start with. It could also increase, um, you know, the, 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 the appreciation of the arts could increase the appreciation of the of the culture. It could increase a lot of things. So I think it's it's something that should be thought of and something that should be encouraged. That but humanities is a good word. So, and uh, I've been working in conservation uh, since I was very very young, and I've been living in this town for a very long time. So um, what I've noticed is that there is an array of organizations and individuals that are in conservation but the main focus tends to be on protecting certain certain animals and one thing I always talk about is that conservation can only be successful if it has the acceptance of the people that actually are affected by conservation issues so how do you see that I mean all right so um there's two things here you see the reason why there's a divide between the people and the people who come here to view the animals and the people who come here to conserve the animals is, in most cases, the people around the animals and around Maum are poor. And then the people who come to save the animals are rich. So already there is that divide that these people care about animals more than they care about us. So I think that there's like this, this wall that they build that um, how are you going to come here and try to save elephants when elephants are eating our crops and lions are killing our sheep? And then another thing is, in most cases, um, Maung people are not really involved in like the conservation of, of these animals. People from outside come and these people again don't really understand uh, the, the, the life of the local. Like they don't understand the, the battles with these animals that they're trying to conserve and I think it's, it's a big thing to educate them and then also try and, and understand where they're coming from as well because they've been living around them for a very very long time and it's they understand them and I feel they understand them more than like you know people who who come from outside and know about elephants but they don't really know about you know how the Hmong people have been living with them or how they've been relating to them. And 
Botswana is the leading um, conserver of elephants in the world. Obviously, we're doing something, right? So it is. I think it's just to engage the the community and both sides understand what the other side is like, experiencing and talking about. You know, the the conservers understand that these animals are animals, but there's people around these animals. So don't come and just save the animals. Try and understand the people, try and help the people as well. And then these people should also understand that, you know, nature is very, very important and that it should, you know, be be conserved and, you know, carry on and I think if, if there's a merge of the two it, it could it could work amazingly. Ah cool. Mm -hmm. And what do you think do you as as an artist, do you see a place where do you see art come into play? How do you, where do you see that art and conservation or environmental efforts, which certainly is an issue on a global scale, where do they merge? Where do they come together? What, what's your opinion on that? Um, I think the the first one is, is quite simple. Like it's really really easy. Uh, usage of, of recycled materials. Like I said earlier, there's this thing called called mixed media art where you can use recycled material. There's people who use wire for starters, wires that are, that are discarded. There's artists tend to to create even when they don't have the resources. So that is why they're so good at recycling. You see. And that that is like it's a no brainer. And then also it's Art and the environment, like we said, artists draw what they or they paint what they know, and they paint the environment. and And I think it's 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 celebrating the environment, it's celebrating their cultures, and it's celebrating like a, a lot of of what they know. And in in places like Maung, where where nature is such a big thing, a lot of the art here celebrates that. And a lot of the art here is 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 indicative of, of what the people around here know. A lot of the art here is is things that talk about you know they show elephants and th that relevance to, to to the world and they show a other animals they show you know a lot of things. One of the sculptures here is called you know birds and that alone sparked a conversation with with kids the other day about how you know this bird is this one this bird is this one and then. Um, one of the dads was talking about, I think, the Malachite and how, you know, the numbers are dwindling and something like that. And then, you know, just such conversations are sparked from just viewing these pieces and, and meeting these artists and asking about, you know, why are you drawing an elephant? And this artist will tell you that piece. And then, you know, it's, it's so it's, it's kind of, it might be a small one, but it, there's a little link to uh, the two. I actually see, you see it also, I mean, a lot of people also in Botswana, I mean, a lot of people uh, move away from these rural areas and live in our larger towns, Gabara, and, you know, Palapi, Saroli, Francistown, and you name it, and they move away from these rural towns like Maun or Hansi even. Um, and uh, so over time, they will also get a little bit, let's call that detached, as generations grow up as city people mm -hmm. so they will also get detached and i see art maybe also as a tool to remind people mm -hmm. to kind of tell of, them to, to of, their past. of what they actually have had so mm -hmm. in a sense one could even argue that it is a good tool to preserve culture, culture. Yeah, definitely. and uh, that's a that's a cool thing yeah, actually definitely because the reason why we know so much about egyptian history is because of the hieroglyphics which um, is I haven't even seen art. it that way. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, art. Yeah. You know, so like rock paintings, yeah, you know, cave, cave paintings. These are things. The reason why we know that mammoths were were um, hunted with spears is because of cave paintings. Yeah, yeah. So little hills, such things. So I, I haven't even thought about it that way. So, mm -hmm. uh, just so all of this is art, and I think one thing that, and I don't really blame Botswana because. Uh, you said earlier about how you know we we are a young nation. We are less than 60 years old. So most of the people who gained independence are still alive today. Most of these things are 
are passed by word of mouth, right? So that's one of the reasons why art is not really, really appreciated. Another thing is, we weren't really a colony, we were more of a protectorate, so we didn't have a lot of, you know, the investments that colonies had. Yeah, yeah. You look at Joburg, you look at Harare, you look at Windhoek, colonizers built structures that, you know, they, they knew they were going to be there for a really, really long time. Here, that didn't happen. We had to start from scratch. So, starting to build the nation, and then I think as years go on, we are now going to start appreciating the building of the nation. And then that's where art really, really comes in. That's where, you know, the art renaissance of Botswana will happen, where uh, the people who know all of these things have now passed on and you need, you know, visual reminders and beautiful reminders like art pieces and stuff like that, where pottery would be something that, you know, pottery from 2021, and that's an important thing. That's when you know, things like that will happen. So, as a young nation, I think we're getting there. But another thing is like, the reason why these other countries appreciate art and we don't is because, again, they were exposed to things like that. They had museums already. So yeah. they, they knew that art was important. Here, we didn't really get to know that until we found out for ourselves, you see. So yeah, I, think we, we're, I think we're gonna, uh, Botswana is on a good track. Mm -hmm. And I was, mm -hmm. I mean, I walked in here the other day and, you, and we had a quick chat. So I was, I was blown away. It was like, oh, what the art exhibition? And I'm not an art person, yeah. as I want to say. Mm -hmm. And I just like, oh, finally something happens. Yes. Yes. So, and I just hope that uh, we can continue yeah, on no, this no, particular no. trajectory. You know, and other plans. have these things, you know, mm -hmm. on a more regular basis, you know, and then people will become aware of it and it will most likely increase the, appre you know, mm -hmm. the appreciation by the average person on the street, mm -hmm. not just the tourists. Yes. So uh, it's not just about, it's not just about our beloved tourists, we love you guys, mm -hmm. but <laughs> it's also about, it's also about the people that we actually live, yeah, live here in, yeah. a, in a daily, ba on a daily basis. And uh, just, um, you sold a couple of art pieces yes. out of your exhibition. How many of these pieces did you sell to local people? To local and people. you can count me as a same my local, mm. as a whole form. Uh, <laughs> yes, uh, it was you and um, a gentleman who wanted a self-portrait. I think the thing with locals is they want self-portraits. So there's a gentleman who wanted a self-portrait and then all the others were tourists. Oh, was it? Yeah. Okay. So like the thing with, with locals is they come in and they're impressed and I said they're still learning these things. So they come in and, you know, a parent will go, oh my goodness, this is worth this much. My son does things like this. I'm going to encourage him to go for it. And I think right now we're at the building blocks of, of, you know, of making art something that people appreciate. We are we're, we're pioneering this and, and it might not happen in our lifetime, but at some point it will happen and it will be because of such things, it will be because of such exhibitions, it will be because of places like Tapong and Khaporone, uh, it will be being, um, because of, of you know, the different artists who showcase that things on social media on a daily basis. There's, there's a lot that we're, we're learning and we're learning it as we go along. It's not like we're just standing here learning from afar, no, we're learning it step by step as we face the challenges, so. Very right, cool. Mm -hmm. So, Tabo, let's go and have a look at some art pieces. All right, all right. Let's. Cheers. <laughs> Here, Miss Carter. Um, this is a header woman. This Carter of a header woman on fire with us. And the headgear signifies the importance of, of cattle. You see, so the women wear these, these all big dresses. And then they wear this headgear to signify the appreciation of cows. And we're talking about culture and like the environment. So there's this place in Kabulon called called um, Old Nale, right, where there's a lot of shacks. So this gentleman, he when he first moved to Kabulon, he lived in a place like Old Nale, right. And so this is the recycled material I was telling you about. This is actual um, cans from like tin from canned foods. And then this is actual wire, and then he uses wood as well. 
and he incorporates that with uh, um, oil paint for the other bits. And then uh, more about the environment, you know, animals that are around Botswana. Another example of the, the shacks that this gentleman uh, will I actually find these things very realistic. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have seen these, uh, however you want to call it, whatever the correct word would be, but I have seen these rather poor communities. Mm -hmm. You know, and it actually, it really looks like yeah, it. Really, really looks like it's, it. it's just, I it feel really like, I'm, like this. you know, it's like you know, makeshift everything, makeshift uh, a boundary around the yard, the houses, everything. It's just, I think this stuff is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's just great. It's just the well, environment a lot of people yeah. still until today, you know, grew up with this. And uh, this is what, what shapes them. And it shapes their perception of anything. Mm -hmm. It's much like Botswana. It's big as like Batutura and Bindu. Yeah. It's like Soweto. This is yeah. representative yeah. of most of, of most, there are places like this. Mm -hmm. All the, probably all the countries in Africa yeah. don't know about the north, but certainly yeah. in the south we have that until today. And it's changing, but yeah. And then um, this is realism. So another thing that we spoke about is how, you know, painting, you know, um, scenic views is uh, an appreciation of the arts, it's like, you know, of, of the environment and an applause to, to them. So, so Kibumetsi, he's a realist, he's amazing, and no, that, is, that is an amazing mm -hmm. picture, even mm -hmm. just the, the ripples yeah, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the thing yeah. as the, the buffalo move through, it's mm -hmm. just, and even here in the back, it's just even the, you know, it's amazing, it's just, just the shadows and things, it's just, it's just it's everything, it's just the yeah. realism, that's, you know. It just blows me out of my shoes, which... And then another the thing that is appreciated, like, the head of the most of one appreciate cows. Like, cows are used for, for uh, Lobola, you know, that are used every wedding, every funeral, every party, every Independence Day, the cow is started, and it's, it's a form of celebrating, or, you know, it's, 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 it's our, it's our thing, cows are, and that's why I'm good. Jabu, you need to do it in America. You need to explain what Lebola is. Lebola. Okay. <laughs> so Lebola is, is bride price. It is basically, you know, you, you want to marry uh, someone and you have to pay their parents for their hand in marriage. And then it can be anything from eight cows to however many. Yeah. Uh, and the currency, um, the traditional currency is yes, cows. Is cows. Yes. So there's, even our, our, um, our university, the University of Botswana, it was actually built because of cows. Uh, the, the then president, Kitimuna uh, Masire, sorry, Kitimuna Masire, he had this, this initiative called Motole Mutokom, which means every person, one cow. And people would come from all around the country with that one cow and then drop it there and they sold the cows and that's how the university came about. Oh, so how they contributed to yes. financing it nationally, yeah. like uh, university. the first university in, in the country, <laughs> as far as I remember, because yeah. I used to work for them. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Yeah, no, that, that is a picture of a cow. No, that is, I mean, as serious as it is, it's, 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 it's amazing. It's yeah. funny, yeah. It's, it's amazing, <laughs> it fits into the culture. It's, it's pretty great. Yeah. Uh, anyway, what else do we have? I can see the Malachites in the back. We yes. get about, yes. yes. Because I was thinking about, it could be explaining what the ma is, mm -hmm. but I think that speaks for its for itself. Uh, Malafite obviously is a kingfisher, folks, and it's very colorful. And for the first time, I actually see that it has slight hints of color on it. Yeah, so that's a pretty amazing piece. Um, and there are more birds. Yes. And more of the human shacks, and, and then we have the like more modern, what I would call modern. Yeah, this is modern, but it also has a hint of, of um, tradition and culture. This is what we call the daisy. You see, this here is cloth and it's, it's pasted on it. And it's called the daisy, and the daisy is traditional way. 
This is the traditional clothing that mainly women wear yes. as, as dresses and dresses and stuff. Yes. So she used um, this Ikimeno Moteta. She used the uh, Letesi as the, the lady's um, hair. So mm. there's a hint of tradition to even the modern art. It's, you know? I, mean, I mean, obviously, mm. now since you pointed it out, I can clearly see that. So that's pretty cool. We will check these cloth pieces out a little bit later. So. Now, all right, what well, else? Yeah, we have zebras, you know, national animal, you know, more cows, just to you know, show you the importance of, of cattle to, to Botswana. And then more uh, cycle animals. Yeah. More of the environment. And then this one used trees to emulate tree trunks and, and branches. See. I didn't notice that the other day. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty cool. Quite amazing. Yeah, that's uh, some cool stuff. So, and with this same, very same exhibition, you've been around, you've been in Gabs, yes, and then here, and then we are taking it to uh, Los Angeles time, yes. And pieces you sell, that you sell, are they going to get replaced? Ah, yes, you replace them. Yes, you replace pieces, and sometimes with an artist, like, um, some artists can't follow us to the next place. We just put other artists in that place, and every place we go, we feature two artists. And what about this particular one? I believe this has a very, very big societal importance <laughs> in Southern Africa. You know? It's, it's, well, I might be, but. And people don't actually know, but uh, there were times when when we were in exile, he lived here in Botswana. So we have a really, really cool relationship with the ANC. And it's... No, it's, it's not that it's, uh, it's politically important mm -hmm. for this particular region, because I remember when, uh, when he became president. So it was... 1994 was my, was, my, was my first year, in, the first time when I, as a young guy, you know, set foot onto African soil mm -hmm. and never left, literally. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, this was the year when it happened. So and that was that was big. Mm -hmm. And I seen the golden wall came down because mm -hmm. I grew up on the other side, mm -hmm. of it, and it had both of the same events. Mm -hmm. it, you know, this, I I um, gave an example of this, but how little boys would be sent to to go look after the my family cattle, and then they'll make their own little cattle here with like little, with, with mud and little trees. And this is exactly what it looks like. So for a child who never experienced this, coming here and seeing this and being able to, you know, ask our parent, what's happening here? And then our father is explaining everything to them. It's only such an amazing feeling. Yeah, no, it's, I, I think it also has a very cu big cultural importance because I'm pretty sure so I'm employing two young Motswana and one for sure I know never had to look after any cow probably. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure about you, Hendrik. How many cows have you? <laughs> He's just laughing. <laughs> so but it's it's important for future generations to mm -hmm. see. It's like hey, this is how it was not so long ago actually. So but yeah. <clears throat>
All right, Tobo. Uh, it's, uh, I would like to thank you for coming to class, mm -hmm. and uh, I would like to thank you for the insights you gave us. I mean, it's kind of hard in this uh, during these days. Usually, we used to take American students and we brought them over here, which is impossible. But uh, it's, uh, this time we did it in reverse. <laughs> okay. but just in case, if somebody is interested, someone else. Buying one of these pieces, how does one go about it? Um, it's to contact us, and then <clears throat> our social media I'm sure will be shared, and yeah, we just call it to So it's relatively straightforward and easy. It's relatively straightforward. Uh, yeah, it's like buying something on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. There's, there's um, a website that we use to courier things. It's called uh, Archify Botswana. So we just do that and go straight to the and then straight to New York. Yes. Or yes. Austin, Texas. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. and thanks for coming to class. Thanks for your time, man. It was thanks for all the insights.